Hey, welcome back. Today I have a pretty uncommon thread repair for me and two ways to modify collets. One is to create an actual emergency collet that can be used repeatable and one clip is me modifying an existing collet to a different diameter. This is a relatively uncommon job for me. This is a, a large subplate for a, a PCB test machine, test jig. And th th this plate is D2 tool steel actually, which is, is machined and ground and uh, yeah, relatively nicely made. But uh, the test specimens get bolted down with M5 screws in those four locations here. And over the, the past, uh, I think 12 years or something like that, those threads just uh, had worn out and stripped completely. So I was asked to, to do something. And I decided to machine, to not use solid thread repair inserts or helicos, but machine solid inserts, uh, like a large key with M5 threads in them out of tool steel, machine a pocket in here, glue them in with Loctite 648 and use some, some tangential uh, M4 set screws to hold these keys definitely in place so they cannot fall out in any way possible. As I said, very uncommon because part is very large for, 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 for what I do usually, but it, it kind of worked out quite nicely. I have two large parallels here bolted to the table. I will show you those when I take the plate off. Then you will see the setup. And I was able to hold the plate in the wise back here. Machine two, two locations for the keys. Flip the plate around, machine the other two. So far it worked all quite nice. Uh, currently I'm waiting for the Loctite on the last two of these uh, thread inserts to, to set. So I can drill the, the safety screws in there and, uh, and I'm ready to go. So here's a close up of the, of the thread repair. These are the five M5 threads that needed repair. And you can see by the color difference, of course, uh, where I put the key in here. The most used holes, um, basically the only ones that really get used are this one and the opposite and the opposite on the other side. So the other ones really don't get used that much. So we decided to glue them in with Loctite 648, which, which is really a very strong way to bond precision fit of two parts with, about, with less than 0.15 millimeter of gap for the glue. And just to be on the absolute safe side, I put in four set screws that go into the, the base material and into the key and those get secured with some low strength Loctite. So that, that's the rip. I, I machined the pocket, I milled the pocket out and then I use and then I ground the inserts to final height so they are slightly, ever so slightly lower than the reference surface around here. Okay, let's get this off the machine. Uh, got it all finished, check the dimensions, all secured, so let's take it off. So when I loosen the wires, the part will not drop down because it's supported by these large parallels. Which makes this uh, a reasonably safe setup, even as the part is so large and my machine is relatively small. So let's get this jaw out of the way. There we go. I have my tooling cart set right next to the machine so I can drop the part on. And here you can see two parallels just held down with a single screw washer that presses down on the parallel. And this was all the support the, the large plate was sitting on. Not the usual kind of work I do, but still interesting. I thought it might be interesting that I share the way I did the thread repair on these parts. Let's talk briefly about collets. Um, these are pull type 
collets which which get pulled into a a taper of a machine spindle or an adapter sleeve like this one. Uh, these are our 5C collets, which are a very common style. Uh, they're relatively large. They can hold up to maybe 25 millimeter in diameter. You can get them in all sorts and, and shapes. You can get them round, square, hex. You can get emergency collets that you can machine out. These, these two are emergency collets, in fact. You can get large ones. Uh, solid solid collets that you can machine to shape just a very good system very a very comprehensive system unfortunately it's as it's a very large system it does not fit my lathe at least not directly in the spindle i have a 5c collet chuck that i can use these with which is very nice i use it a lot but also it's very nice to have collets that fit into the spindle of the machine it's shorter overhang it's stiffer and it's faster with, to, to change the collet because you're using a draw tube and changing a collet with, with draw tube is a matter of seconds and with a 5C collet chuck you have to run a chuck key and spin it about half a million times. That gets quite odd over time. So I'm using the same style of collet, just a different size on the Emco leaf. These are Deckel 355E collets. These are standard for the Deckel SO and SOE debit grinder and also for the Deckel FP tool room mills. You use them with, an, with a 40 taper or a Morse taper 4 reducer sleeve directly in the spindle of the mill to hold cutters. Also, they fitted the dividing heads with a reducer sleeve and well, what also was also a good system. Unfortunately, you can get them only round, hex, and square. And you can get also adapters that go from 355E to something like, like ER16, which is nice if you have to hold, for example, drill bits for grinding because you can clamp uh, in between sizes with ER collets. These only hold nominal diameter minus a little bit. It's also a system, but not as comprehensive as 5C. And my biggest problem is that there are no emergency collets for the system. Emergency collet is a soft collet that you can machine to a diameter and a depth that you need to hold apart. You can even mill counter shapes into it and use it like a soft jaw on the lathe or bore it off center to do eccentric turning with it and you can do all sorts of neat stuff with soft collets or emergency collets but i want emergency collets within this style this is the reducer sleeve that goes in the spindle of the lathe this is more staple four on the outside and it has the uh, the, the contour for the 355E collet. It says 20L on it. There was a different style of collet that had an anti-rotation pin in front here and had a different thread on the back side. The Deckel collets here have a, a 20 millimeter by two buttress thread. If you look closely, that's a buttress thread. It's angled on this side and almost square on the side that's loaded. Um, you use a buttress thread in this application because it doesn't exert any side load when tightened, which does not influence, or in that case, it does not influence the precision of the collet when tightened down. Um, and also it can be loaded more in this direction. So yeah, that's, that's the, 355E collet, that's reduced the sleeve, that's also fitting for the uh, 20L collets, which are basically the same except for the thread and the anti-rotation pin in front. I removed the pin from the reduced the sleeve. What I, my, my idea was, you can get these, these, uh, these Deckel style collets, I have a full set from 
0.5 up to 17 millimeters in 0.5 millimeter steps all deckle or shaublin and they're real nice collets and they are not sprung close like the cheap ones as you can see you can easily insert your part these are two good ones and this is a super cheap one this is a nine euro uh, import uh, collet and the problem with these is uh, they they work perfectly fine they're relatively precise for what they cost but the problem is if you try to get something in there they are sprung close they are closed they are ground in a way that they have a preload on the bore and that's super annoying that that makes it very hard to get parts in and out robin renzetti showed a trick um, that i did here to put some o-ring stock in the slits of the collet and you're good to go. Uh, these these uh, cheap 5C emergency collet have the same problem and you just take a screwdriver, wedge it in between the slits, wedge them apart, put some o-ring stock in there that acts like a, a spring, a rubber spring and opens the collet up and when you then tighten it down into the collet taper the o-ring stock collapses and you can hold your part so that's also not a big problem that's all but back to the cheap collet i <laughs> a 5c emergency collet costs anywhere between 10 and 50 euros dollars whatever um, this el cheapo import 355e call it that's also 10 euros so huh, why not use this i'm going to anneal the head of it just just draw it back in in hardness so it can easily be machined then i'm going to drill three holes with a three millimeter diameter so i can put three pins in there then i can just put it in the lathe preload it with the with draw tube machine it to the size that i need pull out my three pins and i have an emergency collet a little two extra steps basically over a normal this one you can go right away to the lathe and bore it in this case i have to prepare it i have to anneal the head and i have to put the three holes for the preload pins in annealing the collet i'm trying to own only heat or anneal the end of the, the collet here, the tapered part. I'm shooting for a light bluish color here. Uh, that should give me a temper that is low enough to machine it. In fact, if you take a file and we try to file this collet, while it's hard, it's not crazy hard. You could probably machine this right away without much trouble, but I intend to do some small diameter ID boring and that's easier if it's soft. There we go. Uh, now we let it cool down to room temperature so I don't burn myself. I had to find some, some shim stocking that fits into the slot of the collet. Used a piece of brass and very thin brass back here to wedge it in. And I, I have this just in here so I can align the slot of the collet with the travel of the mill, roughly. That's uh, close enough. Uh, the shim stock isn't straight either so you want it to be oriented in some way so you hit the three slots when you drill the the holes so we tighten down the, the three chuck chuck take out the shim stock there we go that's nice and centered zero out the dro i'm going to use a three millimeter ball carbide end mill because i'm i'm drilling into 
<laughs> uh, we're drilling into a slot and the, the, the end mill will go the way it wants or the way I want for that matter. Um, if you use a drill in this case, the drill will go where itself, where it wants. Um, it will follow probably the slot and break and tend to, to grab and just not a good situation. So a uh, ball end mill, you could also use a, a straight end mill, a flat, flat end mill, but I find that the ball, car, ball end mills, two fluters are way better for drilling because they do not wander off and they do not have an edge that can break or a corner that can break. Ball end mill has no corners, so all good. Uh, we're going to drill out here at the diameter of 20, uh, pitch, uh, pitch hole circle of 20 millimeter diameter, even a little bit more. Let's go to 22. And yeah, that's, that's all. And we're not going very deep. Something like eight millimeters will be fine. These holes are just there so you can put the pin in and preload the call it for boring. Okay, 1000 RPM. Okay, there we go. Drill the three preload holes. Now, as, after we drilled those holes, we can take our short streaming the dial pins and push them into the preload holes. There we go, just like this. And now it looks like a regular emergency collet that you can buy off the shelf. Uh, a little bit more picky person would use some scotch pride to remove the, the annealing color here. But apart from that, uh, <laughs> it's ready to use. So this might be a nice option if you have a, a collet system on your machines that is a, bit, a little bit limited in the range of choices of collets you can get, but you can get, for example, very cheap import collets for that system, like this 355E decal style of collet. Uh, this is cheaper than a regular emergency collet for 5C. Let's see how this gets used. First, we have to pop off the, the sixth jaw. which even with this chuck mounting technique with the three uh, through bolts, take a nut on the back side, it goes relatively fast. Um, taking off the chuck and putting a new one is a matter of maybe 30 seconds, a minute if you're slow. Uh, now we have our Morse Taper 4 internal taper. It's a good idea to make sure it's clean. Same for the more step four, it reduces leaf. This goes in. A little bit of axial force. And this is the, the draw nut. Uh, you don't want this to be uh, dangling on there loose because when you start up the lathe, the inertia uh, will slam the nut against the face of the spindle and probably loosen the the sleeve in the spindle. So you just seed it very lightly against the spindle face. Then we need our draw tube. This goes in the back of the spindle. And our shop made emergency collet for shop modified. Due to the fact that we have the three preload pins in there, we can tighten it. Just as a regular collet. And now we can bore the, the ID of this collet to whatever diameter we want.
And now to use this emergency collet, you pull, would pull it out of the spindle, remove the three pins, deburr everything, and put it to use. In case of the import collets, which are sprung close, I would take a piece of o-ring stock, wedge the collet apart with a screwdriver, as I showed before, and put some o-ring stock in here, so the, the collet in a non-tensioned condition is opened up. So you can insert and remove your part easily. But this works This works marvelous. Um, main purpose for this now was just to test out if I can use a regular collet that I anneal and drill the pinholes in here to be used as an emergency collet on this machine. Um, also, these fit my my debit grinder, of course. So if I need for some reason the emergency collet on a debit grinder, that works too. I don't have a 3.8 millimeter collet to do the second op on these parts in the milling machine. So I don't have a emergency collet that has enough meat left to bore it out to 3.8. So I bit the bullet and I'm taking my 3 millimeter 5C collet. I'm going to bore it out to 3.8. Uh, that's okay because these are reasonably cheap uh, 5C collets. One of these is like 15 euros and uh, 5C emergency collet costs about the same. And what, what, you, what, what you're going to do on a, a tu Tuesday morning when you need a, a 3.8 millimeter collet, you have to do something and I'm going to bore this one out. Um, to do that you need to preload it. Uh, emergency collets have holes drilled into them for pins so you can preload them and with a normal collet you can use filler gauge stock in the slits. Just use a filler gauge and check which one fits snugly and drop them in. And it's probably a good idea to have them all reasonably in the same position so when you preload the collet you don't distort it in any weird way. So let's put this on a lathe and pour it out. Okay, after boring, I deburred the collet and I have a 3.8mm gauge pin in here. And this is the runout I got. Uh, it's in the 5 micron region, which is quite okay for a bored out, very cheap collet. It also differs a little bit on which of the two pinions on the 5C collet chuck I use. If I use the other one, runout gets in the 10 to 12 micron range. Deburred with a die grinder, engraved 3.8 millimeters with a die grinder, uh, deburred all the slits, cleaned it out in the ultrasonic cleaner. This will go in storage for future use, of course, uh, and I will just reorder a 3 millimeter 5C collet. Uh, this is a clear case of doing what has to be done to get <laughs> the work done in a timely manner. I hope you enjoyed this quick excourse into thread repair and into modifying collets and into making emergency collets. So thank you all for watching, thank you all for subscribing, I don't say that often enough. And see you next time.